Good morning, all. Hello. Um, wow, that's really loud. Anyway, um, I'm sitting in Amanda's shoes this morning because of uh, BBS. Um, it was a, a great week. Um, a little strenuous for some of us, but a great week. I did a little bit of research last night. We had 29 kids who registered. Um, not all of them were there every night because no baseball and those kind of things that you have kids away. But we had uh, 25 one night, 24 one night, and 19 two nights. Wonderful, energetic, creative, funny kids, and it was a great experience. And uh, one of the things, uh, we, we had this song, All Things Bright and Beautiful, as our praise song, and I had all kinds of repeaters and whatnot, and I would say, wow, that's such a cool song, you did a really cool song. And I thought to myself, I wonder if they know that it was written originally in 1848. Um, and it's in our hymnal, but it has a variety of, of melodies that go with it. If you looked at the one in the hymnal, it wouldn't sound like this one. I picked this one because A, it's cool, and B, the pictures were really helpful for the little kids to help remember the lyrics, the ones who are because the, the pictures kind of show what the lyrics are about. So we are going to sing all things bright and beautiful. Thank you. 
tornadoes are finding a path towards home ownership. You can think of many other ways that love moves. In our own neighborhoods, we are we can witness the effects when we love others by our actions. We can also love our surroundings. We can be kind and patient through the way we treat the earth, our stewardship of creation is a part of the way that we love others. Caring for the environmental health, creating more just for where all of God's children and the 
and glory be forever. Amen. Our offering sentence today. In deep gratitude we come to worship God. We recognize God as the source of all goodness. All good gifts come from the Spirit of God. Gifts like love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, gentleness, these are all from God. We come with grateful hearts, not for things, but for who God is. We gather to show our gratitude in song and prayer and in the giving of gifts and offerings. And if the ushers would come now to gather today's gifts and offerings. Your footprints were not 
not sin. He lived with people of law, about the hand of Moses in Aeneas. And the next scripture reading is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. May God add the blessing to reading this word. We're now going to have the puppets. shrugging his shoulders. <laughs> we had such a good time in vacation Bible school this week. 24 kids were here to learn all kinds of useful things during Bible story time. We got to make some nature-friendly crafts to take home. We went outside to place and some activities, and they got some yummy and nutritious snacks as well. I don't think BBS could have gone any better. I wonder what our puppet friends think about this year's festivities. Let's find out. Come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> For goodness sake, what's wrong with you two? Vacation Bible School is over, that's what. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We didn't want to end it. <laughs> yeah, five straight days. We got to be the center of attention. Everyone talking about us and how cool we were at Spartan. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and about all the special gifts we have that were just the right thing for God's purpose. Yeah, and now it's over. Back to the home of life. Yeah, wallowing in mud, rooting around in the dirt looking for food. You search for worms, you know, curling up in the desert. Yep. Nobody to tell us how wonderful and special we are. <laughs> and how we were in the Bible stories that was cool. Yeah, who we are this. We want to be to come back. We want to be special again. Yeah, well, I have vacation Bible school every day. Could you arrange for this? No, Blackie, I'm sorry. That's just not possible. You'll just have to be satisfied with the great week we already had. <laughs> oh, come on, you two. Cheer up. Pastor Rob is going to talk about another fruit of the Spirit today. And you know which one that is? No. It's joy, happiness, delight. That's what he's going to be talking about. Seriously? Joy? What do we have to be joyful about? <laughs> How about the fact that 24 little kids had a great time here this week? They learned a lot of stuff. They memorized some great Bible verses. They got some new Christian friends. They grew closer to God and to Jesus during the week. Isn't that something to be joyful about? <laughs> That's just fine for them. But what about us? What are we supposed to do now? Just go on being you. That's what. Keep on using the special gifts and abilities God has given you to serve Him. God has used animals like you two in the past to serve His purpose. A bird like you, Blackie, helped lead Noah and his family to dry land. A bunch of pigs like you, pig, helped save a man from a life of misery. If those animals could use their God-given gifts to make someone's life better, 
then you guys can do it too. Yeah, you know, she's right. Of course I'm right. All of us here, including you two, need to recognize the unique talents God has given us and then look for opportunities to use those talents to serve God and make the world a better place. 1 Peter 4.10 says, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace. You know, you missed your calling, Miss Carol. You should have been a motivational speaker. All of a sudden, I'm filled with joy. <laughs> me too, me too. I'm pumped. You inspired us. No more time for this pity party. Whew. Let's get busy. That's right. From now on, it's full speed ahead, doing God's work every time you get the chance, whether it's PBS week or not. I'm very happy to hear that. Let's say a prayer, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, please help us to recognize the special gifts and abilities you have given us and to put those talents to use at each and every opportunity so that we may help lead others to a closer, closer relationship with you. And Father, be with those children who were in VBS this last week. Help them to have planted within their heart a seed that will grow in God's love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miss Carol. Okay, Pink. Let's get cracking. You betcha. There are people to help, souls to save, times of wasting. Bye, all. Wish us luck. See you later. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Do you think there's any bird feed over? So my bird feed? I'm kind of hungry. Remain seated. We'll sing together hymn number 515, Since Jesus Came Into My Heart.
you ever meet somebody that um, seemed far too joyful? That sounds, sounds kind of odd, I guess. I don't know. Have you ever met anyone, though, that seems just way too joyful to be normal? Do you know the type? Do you know what I'm talking about? The eternally optimistic soul who just can't let other people exist in a state of non-joy? Kind of people who just force their joy onto others, like a real life Buddy the Elf. Did you ever see that movie, Buddy the Elf? Are we all awake this morning? <laughs> I had a teacher in middle school who suffered from excessive joy. Well, she didn't suffer so much as the rest of us did. Every day, she began class by having everyone stand up and stretch and then she would start a cd of a song she called the happy song it was a bunch of noise played on kazoos and she'd encourage us to hop and dance around and be joyful i don't know if you have a lot of experience with middle schoolers but i'm betting you can imagine how this routine went over with a bunch of seventh graders take a class full of sleepy morning cranky young teenagers treat them like kindergartners and do you know what you get you get even crankier 7th graders who now feel irritated at all this manufactured joy being pushed onto them. I don't know, maybe you would enjoy this. Looking at Sophie, Phoebe, Ella, should we do this? Happy, happy dawn, happy song, happy dance? No. <laughs> joy is an interesting concept. It's where we are this week in our Fruit of the Spirit lesson. Last week was love, today is joy. And against these things, there is no law, the Apostle Paul says. I might have argued against that as a middle school kid, cranky first thing in the morning. Too much joy, too early in the morning. I think maybe that could be illegal. Just out of curiosity, do you ever wake up in the morning feeling wonderfully recharged and refreshed, and you sit on the edge of your bed and you say to yourself, boy, I just can't contain this feeling of joy. Anybody <laughs> That's why I think we don't always understand this biblical concept of joy, because that's often the image we have. Excessive happiness, unrelenting pleasantness, overwhelming cheerfulness. But is that really the biblical understanding of joy? Last week I talked some about the different Greek words for love, because sometimes our English language just falls short when we try to understand these biblical concepts. Joy is no different. So here's this week's Greek word, kara. You want to say that with me? Kara. If you were to write it in English, it's C-H-A-R-A, -A, but it's pronounced kara. And that's the word that we see in Galatians here for joy. It's also translated in the scriptures as rejoice. So between joy and rejoice, kara, it's a lot of time in the New Testament. The word appears about 60 times in the New Testament. And in case you're wondering, joy and happiness are not interchangeable. These are two different words, two different concepts in Scripture. So while my middle school homeroom teacher may have been excessively happy, that doesn't necessarily equate to joy. <coughs> A mentor told me once, happiness happens, joy abides. Happiness happens, joy abides. And that's a good way to begin to understand the biblical concept of joy. Happiness and joy are similar, but they're not interchangeable. Happiness happens, joy abides. Happiness is a feeling. Happiness is a feeling. It's a response to a stimuli. Joy, on the other hand, is an emotion. And maybe you're wondering, wait a second, aren't feelings and emotions the same thing? And the psychoanalyst in me would say, no, they're not. So here's the short version of a complex psychological lesson. I mentioned that feelings are the result of some sort of stimuli. Emotional experiences, physical sensations, these things cause feelings. Things like hunger or pain cause feelings. You see, feelings are caused by something else. My middle school teacher, her morning routine caused me to feel irritated. It caused her to feel happy. And a fundamental component of a feeling is that you're consciously aware of it. You recognize it, you can name it, and you can almost always name what caused it. Watching my kids succeed in their endeavors causes me to feel pride and happiness. You 
You see how this works. A feeling is caused by something. Happiness is a feeling, and that's why I say happiness happens. Joy is an emotion. And in the world of psychology, there are six basic or primary human emotions. Anger, disgust, fear, surprise, sadness, and joy. And if you saw the movie Inside Out, the writers of that film did a fantastic job of explaining the role of human emotion in personality development. Your emotions are much deeper than feelings. Emotions are part of who you are at the very core, part of your psychological makeup. At any given time, in any given situation, one of your emotions is in the driver's seat, so to speak, directing your responses to what's happening in the world around you, including how you feel. Years ago, emotions were described as psychological predispositions. You might say someone was predisposed to anger or predisposed to sadness or predisposed to joy. The interesting thing about our emotions is that we're generally not even aware of them. They just sort of happen in the background. And they become sort of the identifying hallmark of our personalities. Another way to say it is, we can control our feelings, but our emotions control us. So what does this look like in the everyday world? Did you know you can be a joyful person, and also at the same time, you can feel sadness? That's how this works. Did you know that you can be a person who wrestles regularly with anger, and still, at the same time, have moments of happiness? I tend to think I'm a joyful person at heart, but sometimes I feel annoyed. Sometimes I feel frustrated and irritated or whatever, and that's because happiness is a feeling, but joy is a basic human emotion. It goes much deeper. There are things in life that make me happy, but even when I'm not happy, I can still have a joyful spirit. There are things in life that make me sad, but I can still have a joyful spirit. How does this work? We can control our feelings, but our emotions control us. And here's where psychology and scripture come together. Acts 13.52 tells us the disciples were continually filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit. In our, in our uh, call to worship today, the words of King David, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. The theme in scripture is that joy comes from God. Joy doesn't come from something we do or experience in life. It doesn't come from any other place. It comes from God. It's part of who we are as a people of God. And this is why even in scripture, people of joy can still lament. They can still complain and feel sadness and hurt and even despair. People of joy sometimes feel great happiness and gladness. People of joy sometimes cry and pain and sorrow. The thing that makes us God's people is that above all else, we are people of joy. Psychologists are still debating and discerning the origin of human emotions. How do our personalities develop? How do we become what we are as people? Some of what we are is perhaps in our genes, right? Some parts of our personality are hereditary. Some parts of our personality are a result of life experiences. To which degree is which, that's still up for debate. But psychology through the eyes of faith teaches us that our emotions, our core beings, our personalities, they come from God. God created humankind in God's own image. And I believe that this means we, like God, come equipped with emotions. This is one of the primary things that separates us from all of the rest of God's creation. We are emotional creatures. And one of those emotions that God gives us is the emotion of joy. I told you earlier the Greek word for joy. Do you remember it? Kara, good, you're listening. But I didn't really tell you what it means. Kara is described as inner gladness. It's a cheerful heart. That's a word we hear in scripture sometimes, a cheerful heart. Joy is a deep down sense of well-being, even if you're not feeling spectacular at any given moment. Warren Beersby defines joy as that inward peace 
that is not affected by the outside world's circumstances. Joy expresses the notion of fulfillment, fulfillment in Christ. To be a person of joy is to be a person of hope and a person of faith. Joy is a predisposition to delight in God's presence. Not necessarily when things are just going well, not just when things are bad, but to delight in God's presence in both the good and the bad. Joy can also affect others. There's a story told about the Baptist missionary Adoniram Judson. We've heard that name before, right? Judson was home on furlough from Burma. He was passing through the city of Stonington, Connecticut. A young boy was playing on the shoreline when Judson arrived, and the boy was really struck by Judson's appearance, his, his face. Never before had this boy seen such a radiant light on a person's face. And the boy ran up the street where he found his pastor, and he asked the pastor, do you know who that man is? And the minister accompanied the little boy back to Judson, and the minister and Judson, they became so absorbed in conversation that they completely forgot about that little boy who just stood there in awe of the joy he saw on Judson's face. So that young boy went through the rest of his childhood not knowing who that man with the bright face was, only knowing it was a joyful face, a face radiating a sense of peace and welcome. That little boy grew up to be a preacher, a famous preacher actually, by the name of Henry Clay Trumbull. And in his book of memoirs, he wrote a chapter called, What a Boy Saw in the Face of Adoniram Judson. And in that chapter, he writes about the, the lighted continents on Judson's face and how it changed his own life. He writes that even as flowers thrive when they bend to the light, so shining, radiant faces come to those who constantly turn toward Christ. Joy is a sense of overwhelming peace. It's the peace that we experience when we give our lives fully over to God. Joy is the overflow of living as one of God's followers. Joy does not come from favorable human circumstances, and in fact, sometimes our joy can be greatest when circumstances are pretty painful or severe. The Christian life is a life of joy, and it's a life of joy because it's not our life, it's God's life. We've given it back to God. Our faith begins with the announcement of good news and great joy for all peoples in times of happiness and in times of despair, in moments of struggle and in times of peace, in the face of both life and death, God gives us a spirit of joy. Happiness happens, joy abides. Amen? Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you that even when we're not feeling happy, we can still know that we have joy in your presence. Help us to understand that our joy is not just a feeling, it's not a feeling of happiness or goodness. Our joy is the peace that we have in our hearts when we know that we are your people. Give us again the delight of this joy. Restore to us the joy of our salvation as we again give ourselves over to you as your people. Give us the delight of joy in all circumstances. Help this to be the guiding emotion that leads our lives. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. If you would stand with me as you're comfortably able, we'll sing hymn number one, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, verses one and three.
Last week was love, today is joy. Any guess what next week will be? I heard it. Peace. I told you by the end of the summer, you're going to know the fruits of the Spirit. Will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for giving us this time to gather today to worship, to praise you, to learn and to grow deeper in our faith. Send us out in joy, Lord, knowing deep in our hearts that you accompany us with us on this journey of life. We pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Amen. 